serious, it's fun, it's your Catholic drive time. With Joe McLean and Emily Alcaraz. Joining us right now now via Zoom chat is uh, Dale Alquist. He is the president and founder of the G.K. Chesterton Society. Good morning to you, uh, Dale. Good morning. God bless you. Praise be to God. It's good to have you on. Uh, we're, we're excited to have you on. We're talking about the yoke of relativism, the heavy burden of a world gone mad. And, you know, we read the news. It's part of our job, but it's uh, very clear to us anyway that uh, the world is slipping into madness. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could interview the apostle of common sense and help to understand this? And, uh, well, he's not available, but you are. So here you are, Dale Alquist, to tell us, uh, how do we begin to unravel the mind of Chesterton in a modern world? Well, I, the great thing about G.K. Chesterton in the modern world is that he's as timely and as appropriate and uh, on point as ever, even though he was writing a hundred years ago, but he saw it all coming. He, he was at the front end of what we're at the back end of, and that's why it's so refreshing and helpful and encouraging to, to just get his great prophetic insight into the modern world. I know I'm not the okay. So uh, truth and advertising here. I've struggled with Chesterton. It's a it's an ongoing uh, debate here at the team, the Catholic Drive Time team, uh, because Emily and Adrian are both like uh, uber Chesterton fans. Huge fans. Huge fans. I think they might even have a tattoo. I'm not even sure. Uh, I, however, struggle with Chesterton. Um, I've I guess one of the reasons why I struggled with him was because I felt like he could have he could. I felt like he was too wended, like he, he said too many words to get to the point. I always felt like I needed him to get to the point faster. Of course, uh, uh, the Father Brown mysteries are awesome. You know, you, you love those. Those are very engaging. Um, but I know there has to be people like me out there that have struggled. Uh, have you encountered knuckle draggers like me? Uh, yes, yes, I have, and it's okay. It, it goes away. Uh, <laughs> it goes away. <laughs> there's treatment for that is what you're saying? <laughs> Well, I mean, one of the ways uh, that he works so well for the modern audience is he he's quotable. So even though you say you can get lost uh, reading Chesterton because he'll take you on the scenic route if you're reading one of his books or one of his longer essays, the, the point is there's so many great one-liners along the way. And one of the, one of the things that we've done as the Chesterton Society is we collect those one-liners and we, you know, we put them on the whatever that Twitter thing is called. And, uh, you know, I have been making uh, the very most of just quoting Chesterton for the last 30 plus years. <laughs> <laughs> it's become a career. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here, I'll give you a couple good Chesterton quotes and see if you can get your head around these, okay? Uh, something, you know, Chesterton says it, it, back in 1926, he said the next great heresy is going to be an attack on morality especially on sexual morality. Mm. Wow. Are, are you with me so far? You nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But then he goes on. He says more. He says, um, this, he, was, he was writing this in 1926 when all the, the great fear of communism was in the, in the world because the Bolshevik revolution in Russia had taken place less than 10 years before. And he says, the madness of tomorrow is not in Moscow, but much more in Manhattan. Wow. Yeah. And here we are. Two, I mean, two for two there. <laughs> yeah, he's doing pretty well so far. Yes. <laughs> See, that's the kind of Chesterton that I need is Chesterton in quotes on cards, not like Chesterton book form, uh, like an, an orthodoxy. I just struggled with orthodoxy. It was just, I felt like I just, can you hurry this along, GK? I mean, I just want you to get there. And I felt like well, we, it was. We it was actually hard. have a solution for that, too. Um, we have come out with a new edition of Orthodoxy. Really? Yeah, it's called um, an American translation. <laughs> <laughs> you have to translate from the original English. Is that what you said? Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, and a, a lot of people forget that that English in England in the early twentieth century might not be completely the same as English in America in the twenty first century. Mm. Uh, and there there are certain words that are not the same and certain usages that are not the same. But the main problem with uh, the modern American reader who reads orthodoxy, which is sort of required reading, uh, is is that Chesterton does make allusions to 
uh, contemporary personnel. That only means you've joined a great list of human beings that I have cut off because we have to go to break. <laughs> so congratulations to you on that. But we're going to be right back after this very short break with Dale Alquist, founder of the G.K. Chesterton Society, talking about the apostle of common sense in a crazy world. We'll be right back. It's like learning to ride a bike. One Minute Monk, Abbot Placid Solari of Belmont Abbey. Remember when you first learned to ride a bike? It was a bit uncertain and shaky at first, and inevitably there were the falls. The only way to learn was to get right back on the bike and try again. In the rule of St. Benedict, the saint tells us that virtue is a lot like that. We grow into it slowly, although we often think it should be quick and easy, almost automatic. In reality, though, it's like learning to ride a bike. We fall and get up again, and each time we try again, we get just a little better. Soon, we know how to ride the bike. It becomes natural, and we do it without even trying. For your free copy of The Rule of St. Benedict, visit OneMinuteMonk.com. O-N-E, MinuteMonk.com. When we fall in our attempts at virtue, we simply need to get right back up and keep on trying. We can do it. Hi, I'm Emily Alcaraz, and I'm the co-host of the Catholic Drive Time Show, which airs from Monday to Friday at 6 a.m. Central Time. I'm excited to announce our partnership with our new underwriter, Real Estate for Life. Real Estate for Life offers a faith-based experience while supporting the gospel of life. They work with over a 1,000 pro-life agents worldwide and generously support a variety of pro-life organizations. Their website is realestateforlife.org. That's realestateforlife.org. Joe McLean, so good to be on with you. Praise be to God. We're talking with uh, Dale Alquist. He is the president of the Society of Gilbert Keith Chesterton, the G.K. Chesterton Society. I want to get us back into uh, the, the heavy yoke of relativism. Um, we, we live in a world where people identify with crazy things. And, uh, you know, as much as I wish I could be a, a seven foot uh, eight NBA star, it's just, it's not reality. But yet, we live in a world where people think this way. They think a absolutely uh, absurdly, uh, sort of devoid of common sense, devoid of, of even natural law. Uh, Dale, help us understand this uh, from Chesterton's point of view, writing 100 years ago, seemingly writing about our own day and our own time. What is the, the yoke of relativism? Yeah, Chesterton calls common sense the extinct branch of psychology. <laughs> you know, so common sense is what everyone knows is true, uh, and they've known it always, but they have just forgotten it. And uh, we, we go off the rails with fads and fashions that seem urgent and poignant at the moment, but we have lost our grounding. And, and what Chesterton is so good at is just bringing us back to, uh, to reality, to common sense, to things that we, we know are true. But... It, it really goes back to an attack on uh, the Catholic Church and Catholic philosophy as best articulated by St. Thomas Aquinas, who, who says, you know, our, our senses are the doors and windows to a reality that is really there. And uh, when, when we start saying, well, that's, that's not reality out there, that we can't trust our senses, we can't trust our common sense, uh, that, that's when philosophy itself unravels and people lose their moral reasoning and their mental reasoning. Mm. And, and that's, that's what Chester does such a good job of trying to bring us back. He, he actually explains Thomas Aquinas to a modern audience very well. He, he did write a book on Thomas Aquinas, and it, it's considered one of the best books ever written on Thomas Aquinas. But you know, that's what the modern world is, to read some Thomas Aquinas. <laughs> Amen. Oh, man. Adrian's missing Adrian's out. not even here to enjoy the moment. <laughs> Our producer, <Yeah>. huge Thomist. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I know that G.K. also loved to debate, especially his brother, before his passing in World War I. Um, but G.K. seemed to have the knack, unlike most of us, when we get into arguments with friends or family, we tend to get very uh, heated in our debate, uh, we very personal in our debate. But G.K. seemed to have the skill to avoid those types of pitfalls in order in, 
to hopes in the hopes of winning the person over. Tell us about that, because I think there's a clue there to possibly turning things around in our society. Yeah. Amen. He he was he he was one who was known as a man with no enemies because all of his enemies were so charmed by him, his philosophical enemies, that is his opponents who disagreed with his ideas uh, couldn't get mad at him because he was so charitable and and treated his opponent with with respect and with their human dignity but he only attacked their argument uh, and he but he took it, he took their argument seriously he actually listened to them he let them uh, make their point but then he showed them how their own uh, idea just didn't didn't lead to a logical truth he, he, he was so good at starting with some point of agreement with his opponent and showing, well, this is where that idea leads. It doesn't lead to where, where you have taken it. But but the idea of of debate is lost our sight because simply we just don't listen to each other. And, uh, and Chesterton showed that he actually cared about the person he was debating with and was trying to show uh, how reason works. You know, he says the way argument is supposed to work is it's disagreeing in order to agree, whereas the failure of argument is to agree to disagree. Hmm. Wow. So what would Chesterton do? We should have a, do we have wristbands or t-shirts that say that? What would Chesterton <laughs> do? Do you sell those on your website, chesterton.org? I wonder. Well, you know, the great thing is we don't have to worry about what Chester would do. We know what he did do. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to make up uh, words and put in his mouth. We just have to read what he says because he's as, as right as ever. For instance, if he says, we have lost the idea of repentance, especially in public things. We, we don't admit when we've, we've gone wrong. He says, we've also lost the idea of accepting authority. Uh, and and we we accept things on no authority. We, it's rather than accepting it on a real authority, we accept it on no authority. And, and he shows how fads and fashions are always temporary. They always seem urgent, uh, and people get caught up with them and swept away. But his great line is, the dead thing goes with the stream. Only the living thing can go against it. Wow. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> So how would we, what, if Chesterton were here and he was having to debate someone who's caught up in a, uh, a sort of a, an identity crisis, especially along the sexual lines, someone in the, uh, the trans community or what have you, what would be, what do you think he would say to someone like that in order to win them over? Well, I think he'd, he'd, he'd uh, just to show the, the historical, he, he'd try to show how, how we got to this point and he'd say, well, he, he did say, he says, you know, the, the modern exaggeration of sex has become sexlessness. Wow. Uh, we, we have, we have, you know, that, that focus on that, that sexual heresy, that sexual morality has, has been, uh, you know, an attack on the normal use of sex, which is a man and a woman create a child together. It's called a family and we've lost a family based society a society that respects and supports and nurtures the family, which is the basic unit of society. And all of these particular strange ideas somehow attack the home and attack the family. And certainly something like the loss of sexual identity is, it, is an anti-family idea uh, because one sex cannot be another sex because the whole purpose of sex is to create a family. Mm. Uh, he says that is the basic unit of society. And he says, it's the only kingdom that creates and loves its own citizens. Yet we live in a world where people are celebrities come out as non-binary. Con constantly. Yeah. It's GK Chesterton was so ahead of his time. I mean, he had no idea how much more relevant this would all become. And now we have one of our listeners, Samuel from Odessa, said that he has started his kids on Chesterton at an early age, which is brilliant because we need to get to our children, teach them about relativism before the world does, before the world indoctrinates that into their psyche. And so if, if there were a parent out here who wanted to begin teaching their children about relativism from G.K. Chesterton, where would you uh, suggest that they start? Well, if they're, uh, if, you know, if they're 
talking about a, a teenager, a young teenager, they, they can start with the Father Brown stories. That's a great place to start. And then some of his, uh, his easy essays, such as A Piece of Chalk and What I Found in My Pocket and The Twelve Men, uh, the, his, his early essays are very wonderful nuggets of, of truth, just laying out a very good idea and showing how to think straight. <laughs> mm. You know, when they get a little older, they're, they're, they, you know, when a high school age student can start reading Chesterton's book on St. Francis of Assisi, our new uh, translation of Orthodoxy, and even the Thomas Aquinas book, which really, you know, is prophetic about the non-binary, uh, you know, heresy. Chester says there there is a yes and there is a no. You can't have something that's both yes and no. I on the, let's go to the Father Brown series for a moment. It's one of the things that when we're on road trips, or at least uh, road trips with my kids, we'll we look for audio versions of those uh, Father Brown uh, books. Uh, because they're, my kids love the uh, the engagement of the mind in audio. Do do you uh, are there any really great audio uh, translations, audio narrations of the, of Chesterton books that you would recommend most? Well, uh, Ignatius uh, did a uh, a version of the first twelve Fa Father Brown stories, and my friend Kevin O'Brien uh, reads them, and he acts out all the characters and does a marvelous job. Now, having said that, it, that was just presently out of print. That's coming back. Uh, so, so look for that one because uh, that's a really good uh, presentation of, of the Father Brown stories. And Kevin and I are hoping to do some more of those because uh, he really gets Father Brown. The, the whole the whole thing, why is Father Brown so interesting? He's he's the complete anti-Sherlock Holmes detective. <laughs> he, he doesn't operate from this encyclopedia of knowledge. He just simply sees things that other people don't see. And he also understands how evil works because guess what? Someone who listens to confessions knows about sin and knows about what the mind of the criminal because he gets inside that mind. And he, he even says, the reason I solved all those crimes is because I committed them myself. <laughs> wow. wow. We have just about uh, a minute, minute and a half left with uh, Dale Alquist, founder of the, or president rather, of the G.K. Chesterton Society. Uh, last question, Dale. What are the misconceptions of G.K. that you are always having to clear up? you got about a minute and a half. Well, I'm always trying to, uh, the, the big one is that he's accused of anti-Semitism, and it simply isn't true, and it's a very unfortunate lie about him that gets repeated, and I'm constantly defending him against that. It's... Uh, when, when people can't argue uh, with with good reason, they just start calling people names, and uh, and they try to dismiss Chesterton with with that huge, uh, huge and heinous accusation. Uh, the other one, you know, people say, well, he must have been a glutton because he was fat, and <laughs> um, you know, Chesterton says we need more fat saints. Amen. And I think Chesterton <laughs> is one of them. Well, preach it. I love it. Uh, are we going to see a G.K. Chesterton uh, as a saint soon? Uh, well, I don't know about soon, but we are certainly working on it. If people go to Chesterton.org, they can get a prayer card. And a lot of people have been asking for his intercession. We've, we've passed out thousands and thousands of his prayer cards. All right. Praise be to God. Dale Alquist, thank you for your time today. We're very grateful to you. God bless you. God love you and God bless you. Have a great day. And that is going to do it for hour number one of Catholic Drive Time. Praise be to God. We have survived it even without Adrian Fonseca. Who knew the graces of God are so good. But uh, all right, we're going to come back after the top of the hour break. And we're going to have hour number two. If you are able to join us, we'll have a game show. I'm not sure exactly how, but it'll happen. And prizes are involved. So we hope you'll come and hang out with us. You can find the links on our website, grnonline.com forward slash CDT. God love you and God bless you. If not, we'll see you back here 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern for Catholic Drive Time. See you then. Thank you for joining us on Your Catholic Drive Time, where it is our pleasure to keep you informed and inspired. Join us Monday through Friday at the same time, right here on your favorite Catholic radio station. Don't forget to connect with us. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Be sure to share more than just us today. Share Jesus with everyone you meet. Bye now, and God love you.